Hey guys, welcome back to the Woolen Homestead. My name's Tiffany and I'm coming to you from Midland, Michigan, and this is podcast episode 90. It's January 27th, 2021, and yeah, it's only been two weeks since I last recorded. Pretty proud of that. Feeling good. Not gonna lie. Very excited. Um, but yeah, lots of things to talk about. Um, not a ton, I guess, going on, just normal everyday stuff, but um, yeah, I'll get to more of that and life stuff. Um, yeah, I didn't get a ton of knitting done, which was kind of a bummer. I looked at that, I was like, dang, I didn't get as much done as I thought, but I got some other things done, so um, I can show you what I've been working on. Um, you can find me at The Woolen Homestead on Instagram, um, and... We've got an email for the podcast, which is thewoolenhomestead at gmail.com. We also have a P.O. box. I actually just got it today. So I'm going to leave all the information in the down bar. Um, I did have a P.O. box for when we had the shop a couple of years ago. So if you have that address, that is changed. So I just wanted to let you guys know that if you had an old P.O. box of ours, um, this is a new one. So yeah, but I will leave all that down below. Um, and then, yeah, I guess we'll get into what I got done this over the last two weeks. So I got a half finished object. I got, um, it's in my little bobbins project bag. It is my heel toe do -si do sock. So I have my little progress keeper. This is where I was at last time. So it's a little head wig and this is from Simply Serving. And then I did not grab a blocker out. I should have done that. My bad. <laughs> but um, it's a really cute pattern. So it's pretty mindless, actually. I caught on to it pretty quick. I was really excited. And then it was super, super enjoyable. I didn't have to look at the pattern. So um, really like this for self-striping. Super cute. So it just makes it kind of a little bit of fun for a self-striping sock yarn. So I got that finished. And then I did start the next one. And I just got the cuff done last night. I just got it finished. So, and what I did want to note that I, I did with this, um, I can't remember if I mentioned this last time, but for the striping, um, like for the ribbing and the striping, anytime there was a color change, I just knit straight across instead of doing knit one, purl one. Um, I had learned that from Earth Tones Girl. She did that, uh, like a sock video set on there on YouTube and she had said for striping if you don't want to get the little blips because I had forgotten that I had done that on the first one so you can kind of see it I think you can see it at the top here yeah so see how there's those little bumps in between I just didn't want to rip out and go back and fix it fix it so I just did it for down here so you don't get those little blips it's really nice I like doing that um, but I did do that on the first sock as well I am using size US1, um, 2.25 millimeter, high, high sharps for that. Really enjoying this pattern. Very excited to have a pair. It's a heel flap and gusset, which I really enjoy as well. And um, yeah, I, that's my first Crazy Sock Lady pattern. So I don't know if I said that's who it was by, but it's, yeah, it's Heel Toe Dosi -si Do um, by Kay Litton, who's the Crazy Sock Lady. And... It's really nice. She has really nicely written patterns. I'm a big fan. So, and that's my first one. So, yeah, that is that. Oh, and I wanted to touch on the comforting socks knit along that I had mentioned last time. Um, so there's a Facebook group for it. Um, it's being put out by Little Bitty Delights and Hand Knit by Cam. Um, you can find them on Instagram. And the hashtag for it is... Um, Oh, I didn't write it down. I believe it's comforting socks, Cal. I think that's the hashtag. And um, yes, you can post your pictures on Instagram, but they had a Facebook group made so that way people can like discuss um, yarns and lots of different like sock techniques and things. Um, it's a really fun Facebook group. I've been enjoying that. Um, and I wanted to just clarify, it's a whole pair of socks for each month. You don't have to knit 12 to qualify, you're just going to get more entries if you do 12, if that makes sense. So, um, you can pop in and out of the knit along. So, which I'm probably going to do because 
I there's okay today's the 27th and I've only got one sock done so I'm not gonna have those done by the end of January but that's okay um but yeah so if I want to cast on a new pair of socks on February 1st and get them done by the end of February um then I can enter those so it's pretty cool um but I won't once it's after January 31st I won't be able to enter those ones anymore but that's okay with me <laughs> I'm just having fun knitting socks um so yeah that is that um oh my brio chevron blanket I want to show that I forgot to grab that I'm gonna go grab that really quick so I'm also working on the brio chevron blanket by Stephen West and this is one of my scrappy Sunday projects um which is also um it's not a knit along I guess it's just a a thing you do on Sunday. You work on scrappy projects. <laughs> um, Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady had started that and it's so much fun. I love doing it. Now on Sundays usually I work. Every once in a while I, I will have a Sunday off but usually I work. So I'm gonna get a ton of work done on them but I still try to work on them. Um, last Sunday I don't think I did anything. I was so tired. I went to bed at like 8 30. I was exhausted. But I will show you guys my blanket. I love it. So I don't think, actually I'm pretty positive I did not show this last time. So it's been a long time since I've shown this. It's all DK and worsted scraps. And I have it inside out. I'm in the middle of a row, but you'll get the gist. <laughs> okay. So this is the right side. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. And it's so squishy and thick and just lovely. I can't wait to curl up with this. And then this is the wrong side. So the wrong side um, is just all solids that I'm doing. And then the front side is kind of speckled, hand spun, um, marled, anything like that is on the front. So love this. I really want to work on this. I was kind of thinking of making my scrappy project day one of my days off. You know, just on one of the two days off for the week I would work on scrappy projects since I generally don't get a ton of time to work on them um, on Sunday. But we'll see. Because <laughs> I do kind of like doing it on Sunday. It's kind of fun. Fun to look forward to. Um, the bag it's in, I haven't showed this in ages. This is an old Knit Picks bag. So it says weekend plans, knitting with a chance of movie marathons. I got this for free one time when I ordered. And it's just got a bunch of pins all over. Can I take a look? Some that I got from friends. I've got, this is a work one. <laughs> This is my, what is this, my two year, my five year. That's my two year anniversary pin. I think I got my five one over here. This year in August will be 10 years that I've worked with PetSmart. It's bananas. This was one of my dad's pins. We went to the circus together all the time. Oh, love that. So I had to put that one on there. So, um, yeah, that's my Brio Chevron blanket. Love it so much. That's it for the projects that I'm going to share. So, um, I pretty much just worked on those socks the last two weeks. I put a row or two on my, um, oh my goodness, Slip Stravaganza, um, shawl by Stephen West. And I will show that kind of because I have an acquisition on it. <laughs> so you will see that, but I, I just put two rows in. Um... But now I'm going to show some spinning. I started a spinning project last week. So I'm very excited about this. So for spinning this week, I started a scrappy sock bundle by Wound Up Fiber Arts, who's in Michigan. And it's just a bunch of odds and ends of fiber that she has. And so this is half the bag. I've already got the other half separated and it's almost on the full bobbin. So this will be the second bobbin and then I'll two ply it. And this is almost the first full bobbin. I think I've got 
maybe one more one more little fluff to add into it oh my gosh guys this is so much fun so much fun this has got to be I think this is my favorite spin to date I really enjoy it her fiber this is the second time I've used her fiber and it's so smooth so smooth I love it um and it's Let's see, what is it? I think it's Superwash Merino. Yeah, Super Sock and Superwash Merino. So there is some nylon in it too. So, so nice. If you guys haven't checked her out, you absolutely should because um, she has some really wonderful stuff. And she does uh, shop updates every Saturday. So, yes, big, big fan. Um, I have no idea what size yarn I'm going to get out of this, but I'm going to make socks with it. That's all I know. So, We'll go from there once I get it all washed and spun up. Um, something else that I worked on last week was sock darning. I was very shocked about this. So I have this pile of socks that need some sort of attention, whether it's darning or fix the holes where the heel is, things like that. Um, and this is in a really, really awesome yarn bowl that my brother-in-law made for me for Christmas. And he made me like four of them. So I've got my socks sitting in that. And um, yeah, so I worked on these opal ones last week. And I was really proud of myself with the way these ended up turning out. I had darned these exact socks a couple of years ago. It was not pretty. I did not enjoy it. <laughs> I was not a fan. So I had been pushing off doing this for a long time hence the bowl full of socks that need darning and um yeah very very excited so i'll show you they both needed attention so this green patch is the one that i'm really proud of that was my second attempt that when i had done it that day this was the very 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 first time i had darned i'd have it on each one and it was just <laughs> so bad. But yeah, this I was very, very happy with. Um, very happy with how it turned out. And then this was the first one that I had done. Not bad, but I like the look of the other one way better. And then also my other <laughs> first time darning. But yeah, super excited about that. So um what I found out, I thought I would share this little tip that this is what clicked for me. I, everyone's different, so I don't know. Maybe you already figured this out. Maybe this will help you. I don't know. But um, what I figured out for this one is that when you, when you pull your yarn through, um, if you, like after you've done your initial striping through, if you will, and you're coming back through to weave, push down the yarn. Like after you do a pass, then like push it down to the darning needle. So it gets, it makes it kind of tight and compact in there. That's what really, really helped for me. Um, in the past, it was always just really loose. So I was thinking about doing a tutorial for this. Um, I had watched a few tutorials that really helped. The Very Pink Knits one is the one I watched. And I really picked up a lot from that one. The only thing that I did different than what she does is she had done like a, there was like a running stitch all the way around here first, and then you attached it to that. I just didn't do that, but it was the same concept that she had other than that. Um, but I was thinking, why not just share how I did it um, in case it helps somebody? So let me know if you guys think that would be a good idea. Um, Cause I, like I said, I always had a hard time figuring out what, what to do. <laughs> so um, I've got, a darning egg. Um, my mom gave me this. I can't remember. Mom, maybe you can let me know. I don't know if you said you got this one at like an antique shop or a thrift store or if this was your mom's. I can't remember. Maybe you can let me know. Um, but yeah, I've got just so many pairs of socks that need darning and oh, just a bummer. So now there's one pair. I don't think I'm going to darn because this was my first pair of hand spun socks um and it was a really really lightweight flimsy like two ply um so I've 
darned that once and it's already worn through so I don't know because I think the whole thing's kind of I don't know I might because they're also my first pair of hand spun and I love love them for that so we'll see yeah I might I might do that so yeah that's my my sock darning adventures um it was actually a little more relaxing than I was expecting too. Once I had a good shot with it, <laughs> um, I I did really enjoy it. So let's see what else, what else, what else. Oh, okay, acquisitions. So one of the first things that I got, what I was mentioning, it was on my slip extravaganza shawl. I can also show you guys what I got done. Like I said, it's literally two rows. <laughs> but still, still fun to show. But this is my my acquisition. And I love him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a little pet rock on a book. <laughs> and he's got glasses and little blushing cheeks and so cute. This was um, from Lindsay Simply Serving. She had these in her shop and I just couldn't stand it. I had to get one. So I love it so much. So he's my little buddy hanging out on my slip extravaganza shawl. So yeah, there's the couple of rows that I did. Nothing changed, but um, oh, I really want to work on this now too. This is like the best slash worst part about podcasting is you get out all your projects and you just want to work on all of them right now and you just wish you had like octopus arms so you could work on all of them at the same time yep <sighs> totally um okay I also got to check out our new yarn shop in town this is very exciting so I found out back in October that we were supposed to get a yarn shop here yarn and coffee shop so exciting um so I finally got the chance to go last week and check it out um they do have a Facebook page. It's um, Stranded Yarn and Coffee. And the the coffee shop is not open yet, um, but they, they are working on that part. But um, yeah, it's really cute. So far right now, it's just a tiny little, it's kind of like, it's in a, uh, a little area where there's a bunch of other uh, businesses. It's like a little group. Um, and so they're kind of, their little yarn shop is just kind of in the corner of that room where the uh, coffee shop is and it's super cute like it's just very cozy and nice lighting um and i'm just really excited to see where they go with it because it's really really cute um so they are doing a sock net along which i was like perfect two birds with one stone i'm doing my that other one like this one it'll be so much fun get all the socks in it and um they said that um you purchase the yarn for this knit along from them you would get a little goodie bag so I was like absolutely I will be there with belt on so the um, project that they are knitting is the vanilla latte socks which I have never actually knit before but I've heard plenty of good things about it um, it's by Virginia Rose jeans and yeah excited about that um, and then I bought three skeins of sock yarn so I don't know what which ones I'm going to use, but I'm very excited about it. So this is one that I bought. It's Sirdar Soul to Soul. I thought these colors were really pretty, and nice sturdy sock yarn. So I like that. And then I have these two, which I'm super excited about. These are both Malabrigo. So there's this one, which is Diana. So pretty. And this one, it just says single lot. And it's very purples, pinks, and blues. Very much my colors. So, yeah, super, super excited about both of these. Um, I really feel like, I really feel like this would go along with a lot of my shawl colors that I already have. I wish I would have used this in um, the slip extravaganza. That would have been really, really pretty. I guess I could have used it, but or I still could add it in, but I don't know. I love that. 
So yeah, and this is very fall colors to me. Oh, I love it. So I've got both dogs up here too, if you hear rustling. Hi buddy, you gonna come back? <laughs> they love hanging out up here. We're in my craft room on the futon and they love coming up here with me whenever I come up here to knit or work on the computer or anything. They just love coming up here. Um, so I will show you, oh, I got a coupon. I didn't even see this. They gave me a coupon for um, the, ooh, I didn't know about that. For um, signing up for the knit along and getting the goodie bag. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> Um, so they gave me, I got to pick out these little stitch markers. Okay, you can kind of see them there. So they're really cute little stitch markers. They look handmade. Super cute. Um, I also got a tape measure. Can't have too many of these. Seriously. And then a coupon, which I did not see <laughs> until now. So I'm stoked about that. Um, oh, <laughs> I shouldn't have seen that. I'm definitely going to want to go back now. Um, and then it came in a cute little bag. So, yes, very, very excited about that. I think the sock knit along is starting sometime in February. So, and it is all virtual. So, if anybody wants to join in, you're more than welcome to, I believe, because um, you, it's just all online. So, um, yeah, that's exciting. And then I think they're doing like Zoom classes for it too, um, in case there's people that have never knit socks before. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. I had these pins that I wanted to share. I got them for Christmas and then totally forgot to, got, uh, totally forgot to show you guys um, last time. So cute. One's yarn related, too. So this one is a little <laughs> kitty in a basket of yarn. Oh, my gosh. So cute. I got this from one of my coworkers for Secret Santa. So cute. And <laughs> this one, oh, I need to take out of the bag because it's so funny. So this one's from another one of my coworkers just kills me. I laughed so hard when I saw this. So it's from Mean Girls. So she doesn't even go here. <laughs> I love this so, 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 so much. Yeah, I just thought that was so funny. So yeah, those are going to go on my bag. I might start putting them onto other project bags because I do have so many on that one. But um, I love that one. So yeah, those are some little goodies there. Um, that's it for acquisitions. I have one more thing coming in the mail and I'm excited about that. Um, but so I will show you guys that next time. And then we have our giveaway winner. So last podcast, I showed off the yarn that was sent to us by Erin at Amplifiber. And this is a DK, two ply Highland DK. And first of all, so stunning her stuff is so pretty did you guys check out her update super super awesome stuff in there um but yes amplifiber and yes i have the winner of that skein of yarn so the winner is barb brown so barb go ahead and send me an email with your info so my email is the woolen homestead at gmail.com Send me your info and I will get that sent out to you ASAP. So congratulations, Barb. And thank you guys, everybody, for saying such sweet things in the last episode about um, Ethan, about us coming back to podcast, and um, about the really sweet things about Aaron's yarn. You guys were just so, so sweet. So for life stuff, that's the last segment. Um, Ethan and I are hoping that we can record a little bit um, when he gets home this afternoon. So he had to go to work today for some training, um, but he will be back this afternoon. And so that's the plan is to do a little bit of life stuff, but I thought I would do a quick overview um, and then hopefully we can do um, a little more chatting later. So um, yeah, it's been a pretty chill couple of weeks, um, just mostly work and living in Michigan in the winter. <laughs> so we got a bunch of snow last night, or not last night, but yesterday. I've been playing Animal Crossing again. Um, that's been enjoyable. My One of my coworkers um, just started. And so we've been kind of playing a little bit, which has been fun. Um, 
let's see. Ethan's definitely on the mend, um, so that's really, really exciting. And something I want to get to hopefully today, I don't know, we'll have to see, but um, I really want to get my craft room organized. It is a hot mess up here. I It kind of became wrapping central for Christmas, so I still have this big table set up. It's where, actually I've got it right behind the camera here, so it's got all my stuff on there. Um, so that's been really helpful, <laughs> but it's just kind of in the way, <laughs> but, um, but it's been really nice to use. If I sewed more, it would probably just stay out. Um, but I don't sew a ton. I want to, my mom gave me a bunch of flannel and I want to make those rag quilts. I have the pattern of everything except for, except for whatever has to go in between the padding. Is that what that's called? I think that's what it's called. Um, that's the only thing I don't have, but I even have the little snips to make the rags. So I do want to do that really bad. Um, but yeah, I just, it's just kind of a mess up here and I want to get it nice and cozy and decorate it. And just, I feel like it's a constant work in progress. <laughs> oh, and someone last week had asked about the blanket, um, behind, or maybe they just commented that they liked it, but I thought I would say, what this is. My mom crocheted this for me. It's just a little lap, like a lap blanket. She made this for me for my birthday last year, but it's kind of perfect for like Valentine's colors. So it's just nice and cozy. I usually have it in my, um, on my office chair behind the camera here, but I thought that it would be a nice little backdrop for the podcast for a little bit. So, um, yes, hopefully I will be able to see my family February 10th. That's a Wednesday. Um, they just opened up dining, um, or no, they are on the first. They're opening up indoor dining in Michigan again. And usually my family and I get together on February 10th. It's the anniversary of my dad passing. And, but we like to, to get together and just, you know, be together and, um, talk about my dad and just, it's, it's usually a very happy time for us to get together and reminisce. So um, yeah, we're hoping to get together on the 10th, um, but sometimes weather is not permitting. So we will see, um, how that goes. Um, and then, oh, I have a hair appointment next week. So I'm very excited about that. I'm going to get some more blonde in here. Um, I, I want to keep the length. I'm growing it out. It's, it's pretty long, <laughs> but I want to just keep growing it till I'm really sick of it. So, so far I'm not sick of it. So I'm just going to let it grow. <laughs> um, but I'll probably just get the ends trimmed up um, and just kind of, and like I said, get some more blonde in there. Um, and then next week, the dogs have a vet appointment. Nothing major, just normal, every <laughs> every yearly checkup type of thing. So they're getting some shots um, just to make sure they're healthy and doing good. A look over from the vet. I've got Ella up here still. Benny, Benny jump ship. Oh, he's over under the table. Um, yeah, so they're going in. And I'm sure they're thrilled. They don't even know. <laughs> um, oh, and I never talked about the shawl I'm wearing. Goodness. Usually it's like the first thing to talk about. This is the Texture Time Shawl by Stephen West. So this was not last year's, but the year before. Okay. Let me think. 2018. 2018's mystery shawl. Super huge. And I love it. I just finished it last summer. And it's so comfy. It really goes well with this shirt. So I was really excited about that. It's like the same pink. So um, it's so cozy though. I love wearing this. I love big shawls. I can't wait for the slip extravaganza to be done. Even though I'm probably going to finish it when it's warm out. Don't care. I'm excited to wear it for the fall. Um, unless I really, really go on it. And then maybe I could get it done before the end of winter. That would be amazing. <gasps> Oh, should I do that? Should I throw the socks aside and just <laughs> go to town on the shawl? Maybe I should. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I've really got for life stuff here. Like I said, hopefully Ethan and I will be able to do a little bit of an update that I can um, tack on the end of here. Um, and yeah, we can say hi. So, all right. I will talk to you guys later. I am... This is also something I usually talk about at the beginning of the podcast, too, and I only had one sip of it. It's peppermint tea, and it's in this really cute mug 
that my mom got me for my birthday last year and she got one for um Ethan as well it's um uh, like there's like a tan one as well that we have so and they're so cute I love it so much so that's what I'm drinking that's what I'm wearing that's what I'm working on <laughs> but yeah I hope you guys are well um like I said there's any info that you need it's gonna be in the drop down bar to get a hold of me and um yeah hopefully I'll talk to you guys soon and keep you updated on what's going on all right, talk to you later. Bye. Hey guys. Hey everybody. <laughs> Look who I found, it's Ethan. He just got back from work and we're about to have some dinner but we thought we'd just pop on and say hi real quick. So yeah, um, you're working on healing up from that surgery. You had a uh, abscess removed from your tailbone. Mm -hmm. It's pretty gnarly. Yeah, they, um, <sighs> it's, it's, it's a, crappy surgery <laughs> and it's slow yeah. going <laughs> i mean the surgery itself is really simple it's really really simple um they don't take a whole lot of time to do the surgery uh but the recovery is horrendous yeah um, and and the surgeon warned me about it when i went in he goes you know it's it's like the surgery is super simple he's like the recovery takes forever yeah um usually it's between uh one and four months to recover from these um is what they do and the surgery hasn't changed really in like the last hundred years or so i mean there's there's some clinics and specialists that do it a little bit differently but for the most part um they uh they just go in and scoop you out like a pumpkin really they have to remove all the disease tissue yep. um, these particular types of abscesses form sinus tracts under the skin they have to um they have to pull those out don't google the images please. don't do it don't i do cried it. um I bawled like a baby. Really bad. <laughs> it was um, very scary. And uh, basically, you just you, they, you have to heal slowly and take it day by day. And, and given the area that it's in, it's really tough to keep it clean. And so you have to make sure you're limiting the amount of activity that you do. Um, and I mean, I've gotten a lot better yeah, compared to how it was. You've made progress, um, but you got a ways to go. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, the it's for the most part pretty closed up, so that's good. Um, but I gotta, I really have to avoid. A lot of like strenuous physical activity i have to any lifting bending stretching that sort of thing because um, the the scar uh hasn't matured a whole lot and given right. the depth of the incision and the width um and the length of it um we, we just have to be careful yeah and um so yeah but yeah you've definitely made some progress it's mm -hmm. good to see but i'm gonna be excited my biggest thing is I, I'm, I'm excited to be able to lay on my back again I didn't think I was a back sleeper, but apparently I am. <laughs> um, yeah. So I have to sleep entirely on my sides and my stomach. Um, I can sit long enough to drive to work, um, but that's about it. Yeah, um, you. I don't ever see you sitting. Mm -mm. No, <laughs> and you so stand I, at work and... Yeah, I, in fact, uh, it was a week ago, week or two ago was the first time I had actually sat down in yeah. four weeks. Um, otherwise, it was just laying on my side yeah. um, or standing up. So. Yeah, it's, I mean, luckily work's been pretty accommodating. I was off for three weeks and then they, when I went back, they're allowing me to, um, I work midnight, so it makes it a little bit easier. They're allowing me to use a standing desk and then I uh, can bring in like a camp cot. So when I have to get off my feet, I can lay on my side on the camp cot. Yeah. So it works out well. Uh, the challenge is staying awake, really, when you're working midnight <laughs> yes. and you've got a camp cot and lay down. But, uh, no, it's, it's, it's day by day for sure. I sat on my motorcycle a couple of days ago just to see how it would feel, you know, and um, it, it, was, it wasn't super great, so yeah. it's going to take a, a while. while. Other than that, the only other thing that's been going on, um, we are we're upgrading to an, entire new, an entirely new image uh, storal and archival system at work, um, and so that's a, a pretty big deal. Um, we've been doing training classes uh, for it uh, throughout every week, and... Uh, in two hour blocks and so I did one today and then I've got one more on the 10th of February and, Yeah, uh, so it's gonna be a big thing. It's gonna be you know, all the techs have to learn everything. Guys. Yeah, because my yeah. like 90 95 percent of my job is working within this program that we have right now And so now we're learning an entirely di well actually two two entirely different new programs um, one's much more extensive to learn than the other but um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. I actually like the new program better. Um, it's gotten kind of mixed reviews so far, but uh, <laughs> I think it's a better program personally. So That's always nice. Yeah, yeah, because we're getting the hang of it. We had switched to programs a couple of years ago, and at first there's always that learning curve, but mm -hmm. it generally helps you out better in the end. 
Right, right. Yeah. And Sorry? you had a new job that you accepted? Yes. Uh, so in addition to working in imaging <laughs> administration uh, and with our PAC system, um, I'm going to also be training in neuro, um, to be a neuro tech. That's so uh, cool. Neurodiagnostic technologist, so I'll be doing um, uh, EEGs, EMGs, that sort of thing. Uh, won't be doing EEGs for, for quite a while, but the EMGs, um, uh, nerve conduction studies, I'll be doing those. Um, right now it's kind of on the back burner because of the surgery and the recovery time. Yeah. I, you know, neuro requires a whole lot of sitting, standing, and bending. Um, and there's not really any way I can get away from that. So until I'm pretty fully healed, I don't think uh, I don't think I'll be back in the neuro department. But um, I'm excited to get back in there and and um, yeah, keep training. So really that, like and that's going to be a two year process, two to three year process, and then I can take my boards. So yay! Yeah, that'll so be fun. exciting. You're a busy guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> love so. it, love it, love it. Well, you got anything else going on? No, uh, just looking at bikes for a project yes. you know, this summer um, I'm, I'm excited to go on a um, I'm excited to go on a camping trip I'm, I've been looking planning for a, a, a motorcycle camping trip oh uh, yeah this summer so that's yeah. gonna be super fun for you too yeah yeah it's gonna be nice especially because you can go and take that out into way into the backwoods and mm -hmm. exactly. you know get to the places that's a little bit harder exactly exactly so oh, that's so exciting yeah. Yeah, because Kawasaki came out with a new bike, right? Yeah, new KLR 650. New old bike. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know that's one of your dream. dream yeah, I've summer. been wanting to get a bigger dual sport for a while. Uh, the one that I've got is a 230, which for a guy my size is a little a little small. And um, and I've got a, a Kawasaki Vulcan 900. It's a, a, like a cruiser, kind of like a Harley Davidson type yeah. motorcycle. And uh, that's great for cruising around, but it, you know, obviously <laughs> wouldn't do so well on the trails. No. So, uh, uh, looking at getting a bigger dual sport and going camping on that. But if, if that doesn't work out, I'll go camping on the Vulcan. It doesn't yeah. matter. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for the prayers and thoughts for him. It was so sweet. I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate that for sure. <laughs> but yeah, awesome. hopefully we will talk to you guys again soon mm -hmm. and keep you guys updated with what's going on. Yep. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.